back at it again with the matrix took a couple days last week but i finally got this thing inspected and street legal as it turns out in north carolina it is 20 years old it no longer requires an emissions inspection and uh, i've been driving it back and forth to work for about a week yes looking like this i went ahead and changed the headlights on it because the original units were so bad that they really didn't work at night. I went ahead and changed the headlight housings and put LEDs in it. So they're a bit brighter now. So I can actually see where I'm going with this turd. There's a couple things that I wanna do. Uh, one of which is in the back seat. So I told myself a long time ago that I will never own another vehicle that doesn't have one of these. So I bought one and it's a receiver hitch. Yes, they make a receiver hitch for a Toyota Matrix and a Toyota Corolla. And I believe a Pontiac Vibe. I didn't know that until recently, but the Pontiac Vibe is the exact same car. So we're going to put this on, but there's more. I also ordered struts for this car. When those struts come in, they're supposed to be here in a couple of days. I'll take them apart and I'm going to install a 40 millimeter lift kit for this car. So it'll be roughly 1.6 inches. So it'll have a little bit more lift to it, a little bit better ground clearance. But right now I've got to get under the car and clean out the existing holes so that I can bolt up the receiver hitch. Yeah, there's 20 years of crap in these holes that I'm going to have to clean out. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. Step one, spray inside the holes with WD-40. Step two, I'll clean the holes out with this wire brush in my drill. This is actually the brush for cleaning gun barrels, so should work. Now there's not gonna be any room for me to film this, so I'm gonna show you where the holes are. Right inside the bumper, you're gonna be using these two holes right here. And those two on the passenger side, just above the exhaust. WD-40 don't taste as good as it smells. Like I said before, there's not a lot of room under this car. So y'all are gonna get a nice wide angle view of watching me struggle with trying to put this thing up there by myself. <sighs> All right, the receiver hitch is on there. And uh, just so y'all know, I did chase those bolts with a breaker bar and a socket. So make sure they're good and tight. They're all torqued down like they should be. Torque specs are around two Uggas and a Dugga. That's an inch and a quarter receiver. That's eh, probably better for it to be a small one anyway. It's not like I'm gonna be pulling that with it. Keep in mind the tow rating for these cars is 1500 pounds. So don't be a dummy. You're not gonna pull the hinges off of hell with this car. We're planning on just putting maybe a bike rack on the back, maybe hauling one of the bigger dirt bikes or a small trailer with a couple pit bikes on it. Maybe an ATV, something like the Bayou, nothing crazy. Don't go thinking that just because you put a hitch on your car that you can pull anything you want to, cause you can't. It's not always about pulling it, it's stopping it. Well, it's a couple days later and I got stuff. We got all brand new struts for this car because I don't trust the ones that are on there because they're like 300,000 miles old. But not only did I get all new struts, I also got the lift kit. These are 1.6 inch or 40 millimeter and they're gonna go right on top of those and then they're gonna go in that car. So that being said, well, let's get after it. This should be actually really simple. Just Jack the car up, unbolt the bottom, unbolt the top, pull out the old spring, put the new one in, bolt it all back together. Really straightforward and to the point. I always say that, and it's always way more than that. But you know what they say, hope in one hand. All right, so I got all of the lift installed on there. I thought I was gonna have to take these struts apart, but I guess I don't. I did have to change mounting bolts to put longer ones in. Those were fun to change. I forgot to turn the camera back on, so yeah. I'll put it to you like this. I gently persuaded them out. I hit them with a hammer. Anyway, let's get this thing on some jack stands and then uh, maybe it won't have as far to come down when we take them off. Come here. 
So really, all we gotta do, unbolt these, these two bolts here, sway bar, and your brake line. And then we can unbolt it from up top, drop the whole thing, pop and swab. This thing should be pretty simple. Eventually, I'm gonna learn to quit saying that. Sprayed these down with WD-40. Let them sit for a few minutes. We're gonna see if it'll come off. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Yeah, baby. So we got these nuts off. This is loose and the brake line is loose. So now what I'm gonna do is lift up on this A-arm. I'm just I'm gonna lift up on the bottom just enough to get the tension off of this. I'll pop that loose and go ahead and pop these bolts out, drop it down, and then we'll uh, concentrate on getting it disconnected up top. We just gotta take these three bolts out and I think we'll be ready. There we go. Ooh. Ha! Here we go. All right. Y'all bear with me cause I'm running out of daylight, but once you get the strut back in, all you gotta do is just make sure these bolts are lined up. Make sure you put this spacer plate back on or this top plate. It can be a bear. Make sure you put your nuts back on and move on to the next one. So, uh, squatted matrix? I'm just kidding. I don't have any part of that foolishness. Okay, so to do the rear struts, getting to the bottom of them is relatively easy. It's just a bolt right there. But all this crap has to come out to get to the top mount. So, uh, yeah. There's videos on YouTube on how to rip out all this stuff. This is not one of those videos. I'm going to pull all this crap out and we'll continue. God, why is there so much crap in the back of this car? I got it all out of there. So there's that. I've got to jack the car up enough that I can slide that strut out. I don't actually have to take the wheel off, but I think I'm going to anyway, just to make it easier. So uh, let me get this thing up on jack stands. We'll go from there. Now I'm just gonna take those bolts loose and pop the strut out. Holy crap, that was easy. Ow, finger, but it's out. Uh, if you're changing the rear struts on a Matrix, a Vibe, a Corolla, jack the car up as far as you can and disconnect the bottom of both struts so that that axle will drop down far enough so that you have clearance to put your new strut possibly with your lift kit on. Because, uh, yeah, I just had to learn that the hard way. I was fighting the stock strut with the new strut. I don't have enough ass to compress that enough, so... Um, Drop both struts. You can just disconnect the bottoms of them, drop the rear axle, and then it'll pop right in. Y'all remember me saying how this is pretty straightforward and, and then it's always way more complicated than it has to be. It's the next day, it's raining, it's kind of cold, it's wet, and my next door neighbor's having trees cut down. So it's gonna be a little loud. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just change out this last rear strut. I've already got it disconnected from the axle, so all I'm gonna do is just disconnect the top, drop the old strut out, pop the new one in. I'm not gonna say it. Oh, 
well now all i got to do is just slap the wheels back on and put that interior back in in the rear and uh i think we're ready to see what a lifted matrix looks like <laughs> this is awesome here she is a lifted toyota matrix just look at all that you can see them big old spacers in there man this is uh this is wild but I think what I need to do now is actually go drive it. Just make sure everything is uh, kosher. All right, so here we go. First test drive in the lifted Toyota Matrix. Oh, it definitely rides different. It rides a lot better. Those new struts probably helped. It's gonna be kind of tough to figure out what made the biggest difference. It was probably just the new struts because the, the old struts that were on this car trash um, I could hit a hard bump in the road and this car would just bounce and stay bouncing but uh man, this thing rides good it's not a huge difference because it was only 40 millimeters or 1.6 inches if you're using freedom fractions but I mean it's, it's not a gigantic lift but I can tell it's been lifted but I've been driving this car for like a week like if you if you just saw a Toyota Matrix for the first time, you probably wouldn't notice that this is not the stock ride height, but uh, I like it so far. The combination of the new struts with the lift has really stiffened it up a lot, uh, and it just seems like it handles better. It's, there was a lot more body roll beforehand, but it rides great. It rides really good. Now we'll get in it. Get in it and win it. And we'll get some uh, some flyby shots here in a minute just so you can kind of see it. Well, that was fun. Well, I guess next up for this thing is going to be maybe some beefier tires, but I'm going to wait for these to wear down just a little bit because they're really not that old. Maybe further on down the line, we'll get some uh, slightly bigger, way beefier tires to go on this thing because, because why not? It's a lifted Toyota Matrix. Like I said, we're still debating on the paint scheme for this thing, but uh, for now, we're just going to kind of run it like it is until we get some tires on it. If anybody knows where I could get some decent tires that aren't crazy expensive, let me know in the comments. If you want to see more, you know the drill. Like and subscribe. And until next time, y'all get up, get out there, and get after it.